Our final presenter is Joe Thompson, who is currently a senior transportation analyst with New York State Region 1. He's a graduate of St. Lawrence University, so he does know the North Country. He's been with New York State DOT, I think, nearly for 30 years. Um, today, he will update us on his multi-state project to apply technology to specialize winter maintenance. So if we could bring Joe Thompson up and welcome him to the podium. Thanks, Chris. Green button. Green button. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's uh, thank you, Chris, for uh, the invite. It's really nice to to be here to talk about something positive. And a lot of times we've we've talked about it in the past that the uh, Department of Transportation is doing a lot of good things, and we don't promote ourselves enough. And this is a great opportunity to promote one of the projects that we're working on. Um, just by a quick show of hands, how many people are familiar with Clear Roads? So so about half. So. Clear Roads is a 37-member stake uh, consortium. It's a pooled fund, and uh, we get together. They get together twice a year and discuss uh, research projects and do a tremendous amount of research. But ClearRoads.org is the website, and a tremendous depth of information, research, training materials, an outstanding resource for anyone to look into. So I, I uh, strongly suggest if you haven't seen it, that you go look at ClearRoads.org. And you can see this research. And the research I'm talking about today is using GIS to highlight highway segments sensitive to de-icing materials. So <clears throat> back in 2018, when I was a snow and ice program manager for New York State, uh, out in Indy, I, it was my first year and I presented this project and it, it didn't get voted in. So I was kind of upset. I think this is a great project, why didn't it make it? And then realized that as time goes on, you have to get you have to get people behind you to do it. So the other states that I enlisted into doing this were Massachusetts, so they are the co-sponsor. Maine jumped on board, Pennsylvania jumped on board, uh, Utah, Illinois, uh, Oregon, and Colorado are all other states that are on the, on the committee. And uh, it, it met with, uh, it was really well received the second time around, so it was uh, undeterred that we moved on. So here's just, uh, you see the states and the representatives that were here. Mark Goldstein from Massachusetts. I was actually hoping that he'd be here today because he's got uh, a role in it. And Massachusetts has developed a tool. If you do a Google, Google search on it, you'd be able to see it. But they've got an, a GIS interactive map with locations that are sensitive and low salt locations. The project goal <coughs> was to uh, improve operational planning by developing an easy to use GIS tool that will help agencies across the country, not just New York State, identify road segments that were vulnerable to environmental resources um, that may be imp impacted by snow and ice materials. That's a, that's a mouthful, but they wanted it to cover everything. The guys from Montana were more worried about mountain goats coming down and getting hit by cars because they were licking salt off the shoulder. So um, they wanted it to cover everything. But really what we're trying to identify here is highway segments that are uh, susceptible to chlorides and to sodium. So I'll apologize ahead of time for this, uh, this next slide because when I was first doing this, it was, you know, this is supposed to be the where part of it. And also, you know, if you have a big problem, how do you address it? So everyone's seen the, the old, you know, how do you eat an elephant? And my, my bad dad joke is not one bite at a time, but one beat at a time. So I know, I always get the same amount of laughs. It's, it's horrible. But uh, the RFP when it went out to the uh, <laughs> the the, uh, the states and the the host agency for Clear Roads is in Minnesota. So um, a lot of the a lot of the folks that came back with it were were from uh, the Midwest. But uh, the ask was for these six tasks. The first was a literature review, then a survey of practice, to compile and analyze those results, and then. Uh, the meat and potatoes of the whole project was develop a resource prioritization metrics and then a geospatial tool, a GIS tool 
that people could use to identify these locations. And then the final, the final report. Um, one of the indications that you kind of hit a home run with a project for this one was, you know, typically you'll get like three or four responses. For this, we got 10 really qualified, excellent um, outfits that responded to it. And for our committee, we said, well, okay, we want to focus on the pro proposal content, the, their understanding, their experience and qualifications, what kind of environmental experience do they have with the firm, the work plan approach, the deliverables, and then for those deliverables, focus on that task for the prioritization metrics and then the GIS tool itself, along with the instructions on how to use it. <clears throat> we looked at all these different, these, these were the, the folks that uh, submitted proposals to it. Like I said, you see most of them are from Minnesota, but we also had Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, North Dakota, and Iowa. And um, we went through each one of them, and this was, a, again, to be careful what you wish for, because I had probably about 400 pages of proposal to look at and, and the committee to look at. But um, this was just a real brief look at, at um, how we drove it down into each one of the proposals and, and rated them. For New York State, we enlisted uh, Carl Kokosberger as our environmental sub subject matter expert. So he looked at all those, that portion of it. I looked at the snow and ice portion of it. And um, Kevin Hunt is our GIS specialist and he looked at it, the GIS portion of it. SRF was uh, hands down the, the group that was the best because they had, in their proposal, had already kind of done this in, in, in a certain sense. So for, for us, it was a no brainer to pick them, pick them first. And they've already you know, come up with this sensitivity weighting tool where you could put distance to wetlands, distance to water, soil types, accessibility, and bring it in there. So um, they, they hit the ground running and finally uh, came back with their first task, which was uh, literature review where they asked about salt transport, water quality, impacts to lakes and streams, impacts to groundwater, surface, surface impacts, soils, vegetation, fish and wildlife, and conclusions. Um, one of the things, in, and uh, I don't know if he's here anymore, but the elevator talk about brine and transport. When I'm doing training for our, our guys, I said, when, it, when salt leaves the back of the truck, it does one of four things. And three of those things are potentially wasteful or, or are wasteful. The truck or the salt comes off the back of the truck and it either one, bounces off the road because the truck might be going too fast, lands on the road, but then gets blown off by traffic into the ditch and it's ineffective. It stays on the road and the temperature might be cold, it gets suspended and then it gets plowed off the road or it turns to brine and does its job. So that's a, kind of the elevator talk to why, why go to brine? That's, uh, that's the way to go. But when you're talking about transport, that's the salt in the ditch. Looking at task four, um, what the, the data inputs they, they came up with, there was 19 possible and how they ranked them was based on the availability, the utility, the quality, and uh, of those 19, we divided them up into four groups, the roadway, biological, geological, and water resource. These are all those, and the ones that were included, included if data was available, and then not included, but could be included later. The roadway descriptors. If it's green, it was included out of the gate. Center lines, uh, lane miles, posted speed, drainage, um, again, surface type, AADT, shading, tree canopy, stuff that can be added later. The biological descriptors were land cover, endangered species, critical wildlife, and geological, geological descriptors with the soil type. Water resource descriptors are the well locations if you have them. Um, agri agricultural land use, hydrology, the streams, uh, National Scenic Wild Rivers, Wetland Inventory, Watershed Boundaries, and then Aquifer Information. So in May of this last year, the tool was delivered. There's two parts. There is a, a, a tool for installation of the software. Um, and that was the first hurdle, was uh, using GIS Pro 
versus ArcGIS. And it, at the beginning, he said we wanted this to be an easy to use guide. And that's the, that's the thing is it really turned out that it wasn't because you have to be kind of a GIS advanced user to use it. Um, but the, uh, they did provide the installation guide and then, a, and then a kind of a quick start guide. Listed everything down here and it has the system requirements. And my first takeaway when, it, when I got it to run, and it took probably eight to 10 hours for it to run through the, all the data and return a result, was that it returned a raster image instead of a vector. So it, it wasn't, wasn't smart. It, took, it showed you something on the map, but um, I really wanted to be able to just click on a highway segment and have a value of how sensitive that piece of road is to de-icing materials. So that was uh, one of the things we went back to them with as a beta tester. When they gave it to us in May, of course, New York was a beta tester, Massachusetts, Oregon, and Illinois were also beta testers. Um, and they had similar comments that it was not easy to use yet. Um, the, the mandatory input requirements for it were the uh, local highway inventory, soils, wetlands, and the uh, hyd hydrologic data set, streams and rivers. Non-mandatory were the wells, the uh, critical habitat, scenic rivers, and the land cover. So this is it. I ran it. Um, this is by English Brook in 87. And one of the th things that uh, came to light right away, and you'll see the three colors on this map where red is high, um, yellow is medium, green is low. Uh, it was showing all three conditions on the same segment of highway. So I, that again was something that was, for me, problematic. You really want to be able to distinguish one versus the other and have a value. Because going back to the how to eat the elephant, you want to be able to say, okay, what's my top 15% or 10% of highways that are vulnerable and be able to rank them. If you look a, a little closer, you can see the, in the box above the, uh, the minimum inputs there and then you give percentage weight to those. And that was another thing back to them is what, should, out, of, what out of the gate should be those percentages to come up with something that's reasonable and they're gonna, they're gonna come back with uh, answers to that. Part of the loading of it, it actually becomes a module that's called a de-icing support tool. And all those layers get loaded in there. And again, that that's, takes time. And once you get them all loaded, the data sets, then it's good to go. Uh, the data is nationally available. So that's the idea is any state in the country can use this. Any county, town, village can use this, load their network. So it's a, it's a nat, can be a national standard, which is, which is pretty neat. So this was the first run, and he, he, I just took the Lake George Basin for the watershed. And you can see right away that it's all like, you set a boundary of 100 feet around a roadway, and this just came up with some, some red dots, and it's not real easy to see. You really have to dive down into it, but at least it identified locations. Um, again, with them being raster values, it wasn't the best way to, to see it. And the scale is an issue. So um, the boundary set here is 30 meters, 100 feet. But uh, we'll, we're looking for the next iteration to this to be better. Drove down to it a little bit further into the village. And this is where we looked at it. And you'd say right out of the gate, wait, wait a minute, these are all draining into the lake, how come they're not all red? And a lot of the sections, they, they get overlapped. So you see, like I said, you have those three conditions on one segment of road where it's high, medium, and low. And that was a little problematic, but the next iteration of the tool will be uh, much clearer. And that's the next steps with this, is that uh, we went back to the Clear Roads Committee and they're committed to making this work. And the uh, consultant is, uh, we got an am amendment to the contract to give them a little bit more work to modify these things and, uh, and bring it together. One of which was having it be a vector roadway coverage, um, modify the tools so it's automated, so it's not so laborious to load and it is easier and simpler to use for someone who's not really familiar with GIS. Um, modify the software. 
uh, for that sensitivity score. Uh, create an installation script. So a lot of that, again, is easier to load. Expand the version of the installation and getting started guide. Um, that includes step-by-step -step ways to use it. And then create a new user guide that explains the layer weighting functions, a place to start, and then how to adjust and what's that, what that's gonna mean. And uh, lastly, it's gonna, um, they're gonna provide uh, instructional videos to companion you the getting started guide and the uh, and the you should you should guide and this is all going to should be delivered by January of this next year so I went through it really quick but uh, any any question any questions for Joe I, I want to uh, one my first question now this is what three years two years three years going so it's not 2019 in the fall okay yeah so and I, I think it's a great, great project. Glad they, they stuck with it. Um, now, the data sets that you're using, now some of those, like wells, may be difficult. It, it's only what is available. And we know, like right. DC, or there's no way a lot of the wells in New York State, at least, I don't know other states. Right, so that, are, that becomes an optional input feature. Okay. So there's basically three, the three mandatory layers, which were the, soils and the wetlands and the hydro hydrology. Okay. A question over there, I think. Actually, I have a question. Um, have you, we talked, there was a little bit of talk about tree canopy and maybe cutting back some of that to get to the roads. I know you would be kind of coming at the, at the opposite angle of what you're, you're looking at, but have you thought about including some of that, like locations where trees could be cut back? To yeah, help that's- lower the salt content and whatnot it's uh it's in, i don't know how it's going to be measured it's it's included as, as one of the 19 variables that can be put into the matrix um i don't know you know as far as like the shading on the road where it's going to you know show it to be the most um beneficial but that's going to be the kind of next iterations and also next iterations and discussions of this is ho is hosting it someplace where people can get to it um, across the board and view it. So there's different ARC viewers that are out there. And like I said, that mass tool is an open domain, publicly facing tool that people can go to and, and see where low salt locations are and sensitive areas are. So the problem and, and why Massachusetts wanted to expand on what they have is that uh, this, this is a little bit more detailed in, in far as the analytics of what those segments are. I'll uh, throw another one out at you, Joe. But, you know, I, I really like this. I think it's a great tool. Um, one thing I guess this does not take into account, and not to put more work on you on this to get it to go, but uh, does it take into account drainage, like existing systems? So, like, when you're taking a look at, you know, you had the, the village of Lake George up. I mean, there's a stormwater collection system that it may show that it's, good meaning not an impact to the lake but there may be stormwater conveyance there and i just did not know if that was a tool or not, not yet to, not to no not put yet put more work it, on you it, it's looking more at the soil type and whether it's, okay. it's well drained um, okay. poorly drained you know okay. that, that kind of thing but um it's a start and it's a you know next iterations and next generations of it could could you know add add that complexity to it no i like that i think it's a it's a great tool. So, and yeah, it's, um, we, we're doing a lot, of, a lot of great work, and that's a one And of with good ones. this grant, you know, Clearroids provided grants. Is it a matching grant? Do the states put so funds into it, or is it just the, it's the time a, match? It's a pooled fund, so each okay. one of the 37 states puts in money okay. every year, okay. and that money gets used for research. Any other questions? If not, Joe, I want to thank you. Thanks. I want to thank the department for this too. I think it's a, sure. it's a great tool. Clearroads.org. Thank you.